Hi, I'm Malcolm Grimwood, and I'm here at Call London for my latest CEO interview. My guest today is Brian Larkin, who's the CEO of United Oil and Gas. Welcome along. Thanks, Malcolm. Great to see you, Brian. Me too. First time. And um, I'm really pleased to see you. It's been a great story, which I've been captivated by in the last year or two. So I'm so pleased to see you in here. So given that it is the first time, really, um, I think what I'd like to do is do what I always do, and just say, just to begin with, a little sort of top-down overview of United Oil and Gas before we get into some of the detail. Sure, no problem. United Oil and Gas is a full cycle EMP junior. Um, the company was established in 2015. We brought it public in 2017. Our core assets are in Egypt, the North Sea and Jamaica. In Egypt, we've got a production business. We acquired that business two years ago and since, sorry, almost three years ago now. And since we've acquired that business, we've increased production substantially. We also have a discovery in the North Sea, the central North Sea called the Maria Discovery, which has six million barrels recoverable. We're currently working on a resources report for that license, which we will have towards the end of this year, at which stage then we'll make a decision on what we want to do with that license. And alongside all of that, we've got a super wildcat high impact exploration uh, project in Jamaica with the entire south coast of Jamaica, potentially 2.4 billion barrels of recoverable volume. We're in the process of uh, bringing in a partner to hopefully drill a well there. Excellent. So let's um, let's um, dig a bit deeper. Um, best to start in Egypt, I think. Uh, you've got the Abu Senan uh, acreage, which uh, you are, you've been drilling on for for some time now. You've got some key wells which you've just reported on. One to one still to come and so on. Why don't you give us a rundown of, of Abu Senan and about the wells you'd, and and give us an idea of what production and so on. Sure. Well, Abu Senan is probably the jewel in the crown of the portfolio. We acquired that business, as I said, just over, just, just almost three years ago. And since we've acquired that business, we've dr drilled over 11 wells on that acreage. We've increased production substantially since we've bought that asset. And we see a pathway for future growth, uh, particularly through development drilling, but also via exploration drilling. And we're about to drill an exploration well there next, uh, which will split that in the next two weeks. That's probably, well, it, it, it's probably, the real question actually, it's the biggest well we've, we've ever drill, drill mm. in, uh, drilled in the history of the company. And it's certainly the biggest uh, exploration prospect to date on the concession that we've got. And if that was to be successful, it'll open up a whole other follow-on opportunity for us within, within the acreage. But Egypt's been a great business for us. It's, it's, it's generating a significant amount of cash, which has been able to fund the entire business for the last three years, including the development of our other assets within our portfolio. So it's been a really good uh, asset for the company. So how long do these wells take, the, the, the exploration well which you're about to spud? How long would you expect? Because um, the one that you've just announced, you announced that you're at CD, but you still haven't quite finished um, working on it. No, the, well, the, the one that we've did, Ash Development Well, we have, uh, we've hit TD and yeah. we have tested it. We announced a testing result yeah. earlier this week. We're very pleased with how that well has performed on test so far. It'll go on to production now. And what we really need to do is, do is to see how that performs on production and yeah. on, on different chokes. The exploration well is a completely different type of well altogether because it's obviously exploration, it's not a development well, so it does have a different risk profile and it's, it's about a 50-50. Mm -hmm. But in our industry, in our business, we'll take those odds all yeah. day long. Yeah. But uh, it, it will take approximately 60 days to drill it. So whilst we would have liked to have had that well result this side of Christmas, uh, my sense now is that that well result will probably yeah. land early New Year. But that... Just, just to, 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 to talk a little bit about that exploration well, yeah. it's potentially 8 million barrels recoverable, so it is quite sizable yeah. uh, and would be hugely material in itself uh, for United Oil and Gas. Given that that will be, um, that's the last well in this, in this drilling program, though, which will take us through to New Year, so. Mm -hmm. um, is your, your, uh, are your plans for next year with the drill bit in Egypt Dependent on how that goes, or have you got an idea of what you plan to mix your production and exploration? What, how does it look? Yeah, I, I think it's a good question. We certainly would like to see the results of the exploration well before we really land on our program for next year. But it's safe to say we would expect to have a very similar program, uh, drilling program next year as we've had this year. Uh, our preference would be more development drilling than exploration drilling. Uh, and I think we'll probably see that reflected in the work program next year. But certainly we would like to uh, incorporate the results of both the Ashwell uh, coming on stream 
currently and also the exploration well before we absolutely finalise our, our drilling programme for, for next year. But no doubt that you'll be fully involved in the in the licence. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. We will be, it'll be a very busy year next year yeah. as we really go and chase the upside within, within the acreage. We've we've had quite a lot of development success uh, since we acquired the asset, but we, we really want to kick on with it now yeah. and uh, really increase our barrels as best we can. Brilliant. Looks good from, from Egypt. Um, let's switch over back to the UK. You've yes. got um, the Maria um, field, Discovery, um, right in the central part of the North Sea yes. with the infrastructure that um, that makes it workable. Um, you could, In your presentation yesterday you called it very high value barrels. Um, there's a lot to do but actually you've, you've done quite a lot of the, 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 the footwork haven't you? So tell us what yeah. you're going to be doing now. We've, we've, we, we've, we've actually and you been... own 100% of it as well. We own 100% <laughs> of it and the license is very close to my heart because my daughter's name is Maria as well so it's it, the license is very close to my own heart. <laughs> So uh, we, are, we have actually been running really fast and hard on Maria over the last six to seven months. We have completed a quite a substantial amount of technical work and I must credit my team internally for the excellent work that they've done over the last six months and really moved through the gears to get us to a stage where we can move very quickly with a, uh, a resources report. Now that work has kicked off that resources report yep. and we do still anticipate having that by the end of the year. So as we go into early next year, we can then decide what's the best monetization options for us on that license. Now, there probably will be more work we may consider doing, such as what would be the development plan for Maria? Uh, how much is that going to cost? What's the best route for offtake? How would we develop this? Because we want to decide whether or not this is something that we want to stay in. So we talk a lot about mergers and acquisition and scaling up the business and growing the business. But, but sometimes the best way of doing that is just developing your existing assets without yeah. stepping outside of the business. So we really want to understand Maria in terms of its scale, its potential and its size, and then decide what we, we may, do, may do with it. But we, we, we may look to divest it entirely, depending yeah. on the outcome of this work. We're keeping all of our options open. I mean, you, you have got that position because you own 100% of it, yeah. uh, which it would be appealing to somebody, you know, if, if it was like when I looked at the way Shell took over Graylin and their full victory, um, and you could therefore, you know, pass it on in totality to somebody else. It, be, the market obviously thinks you're going to farm, farm out part of it for um, uh, to set someone to pay the cost for you. But the, but the timetable is interesting. You said that you quite rightly you've got a lot of work done. Mm. But it, it, when I was doing the, some work beforehand, the license expires at the end of December 23. Yep. Does that push you? It doesn't push you into any corners, but it gives you. You, you, you need to make those, those key yeah. decisions beginning first half of next year. Really. We do, and, and, and that is one of the reasons why my team have been working so hard on this for the last six months. Uh, we like what we see, but we need to, we need to get the work done uh, to decide whether or not we want to commit to being yeah. part of this uh, development of uh, Maria. But we've been moving hard on it. Uh, there is, there's plenty of time left, and my team do work <laughs> pretty quickly, yeah. and we do work them hard. Uh, but it's a labour of love for them. Um, and as I said, because the licence is close to my own heart because of, of, the, yeah. of its name. You um, didn't name it, Maria, did you? Uh, <laughs> I, I do take credit for it with my six-year-old, but uh, the, 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 we're, we're, we're very committed to trying to uh, unravel and identify a way forward for yeah. Maria as quickly as we, as we can. And I guess at $90 a barrel, it's... Um, it's a, it's a definite plus side in the... Uh, it, it is, and, and the latest tax incentives, you know, will have li very limited impact upon us because we don't have production in the North Sea, but it's very attractive to other parties that do have yeah, production in yeah. the North Sea. So the value of the licence has potentially increased, although from my experience working in the industry, nobody makes investment decisions based on tax regimes because they change, you know, yeah. they're cyclical. Today. Uh, it's going to change today. <laughs> there, there you go, case yeah. in point. Yeah. So the rocks have to stand up first. Yeah. If the rocks stack up, there's a chance of been this, been, this been developed. But, you, you know, I'm a great believer in playing the cards you're dealt with. And both with Maria and with Jamaica, we have 100% of acreage, yeah. uh, the equity in boat licenses, which means right now we've got two very strong hands to play in how we develop these assets. So in many respects, we're the masters of our own destiny. On, yeah, on both absolutely. Of these I mean, you really have. I mean, let's move over to Jamaica. Now, I've known this this license for a very long time. Uh, it had historic uh, connotations with Tello, I seem to Correct. remember. 
um, and you now got back 100%. Uh, you like 100%, you know, I can see that in there. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and the numbers look huge. I mean, yeah, I've written down here, you know, 2.4 billion barrels across the basin. Yeah. The Calibri well, which is uh, ready to drill, 400 million barrels. NPV of $3.9 billion. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and, and I need to get a bit more from you about that. I mean, yeah, time, well, timing is important. Farming out is important. I mean, being realistic. <laughs> well, maybe, if, maybe, maybe if, I, if, you get more, if I can give you a bit more context on Jamaica yeah. and yeah, why please, Jamaica, yeah. why, did, why did we like Jamaica? Well, in 2014, before United was even established, when I was sitting at my office in, in Tullow dreaming of starting United, um, I was working on Jamaica as a, as a Tullow project. Uh, when I left Tullow in 2015 to start United, the one license that Tullow had that me and my technical team really wanted a piece of was Jamaica. The reason why was because there's every indi indicator of a working hydrocarbon system. There's oil seeps, you know, there's everything you'd expect to see is there. The last well was drilled in 1982 in Jamaica. There's been 11 drilled to date. All of them found hydrocarbons with zero science behind them. I mean that's a right. That's a big shout, that because yeah. you know I mean, I've been in this business for way too long. But the point is, looking at Tullow all the way through, that that must to say that was one of the best things. That must have been in competition with everything in Africa. They mm -hmm. must have had the Guyana acreage there mm -hmm. before it became popular, mm -hmm. and all sorts of places. So, you know, to say we we wholeheartedly it, and we remain wholeheartedly committed to this project. Yeah. We totally believe in it. Um, but in saying all of that, and you've quoted the numbers, and you're absolutely correct in the numbers you've quoted, the, the first target, Calibri, is potentially 400 million barrels recoverable. Uh, it has an NPV of $4 billion, and we've 10 more of them to drill. So the economics are mind-blowing. And, you know, to be perfectly frank, if Calibri was to be a success, and, you know, we spent time with the Jamaican Prime Minister recently, we spent time with the Jamaican uh, Minister to, uh, and, and, and various ministers across the Jamaican government, uh, briefing them on the project and, and it's it's clear that if, if Calibri was to be a success it would probably be the biggest economic event in the history of yeah. the island of Jamaica um, but in saying all of that and as great as the numbers are there's a 20 to 25 percent chance of success which yep. means that there's an 80 to 85 yeah, percent chance idea. it won't work all of that risk right now sits with us yeah and we have to manage that risk by bringing in a partner now these things take a hell of a long time, as frustrating yeah. as, it, as it can be for our shareholders in particular. But, you know, for a major to go in to... A, 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 it's a new country entry for mm. a major. They don't do no. new country entries lightly. Have you got a data room open yet? We have, we have a data room open for quite a while and yeah. we have significant interest in, in, yeah. in that data room. But these things take time. I wish I could do this at 250 miles an hour, like yeah. we can move Maria at 250 miles an hour. Yeah. This is just going to have to take a lot of time. But the size of the prize is so yeah. big that we have to be patient. And not only that, we have to make sure that whatever we do is in the best interests of our shareholders. Yeah. And also, we have an obligation mm. to the people of Jamaica as well to make sure that we're getting the best possible outcome. And for you're them. getting good support from the ministry and that sort Huge. of thing. So that looks Huge. good. And, you know, and, and it's a it's a timetable thing, and I don't think, you know, you know, again, given how much I've looked at this, I, I don't think that the investors are, are saying, oh, we need to have something. But, but again, next year is going to be quite important because again, I've checked out the license expiry, and that says January twenty four. Yes. So twenty three next year is going to be an, uh, an important year. So you know, all those things that you want to do at two hundred and fifty miles an hour, uh, and you're only going to be able to get a hundred miles an hour, but. The point is, we would expect things to happen during the, uh, including the license extension, I imagine. With um, it, it, next year is going to be an extremely busy year on those two parts of our portfolio. Egypt is always busy. It's always yeah. going to be busy. We're always going to be drilling. We're always going to be trying to increase our barrels. Those two other parts of our portfolio, Maria and Jamaica, are going to be uh, extremely busy next year. Um, yeah. We are bracing ourselves for that. It's going to be a very busy year across both sides of our both sides of the, of, of, of the, of the, the portfolio but um, you know the, in terms of the the support in country both the, the current and in the current government along with the opposition are usually supportive of this project for a number yeah. of reasons well, economically you've yeah you've already said but, it but energy supply yeah it's crucial to an island as well 
Um, and in fact, the, 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 not only is the, the, the government and country been hugely supportive, uh, the Jamaican High Commission here in London and Kensington have been hugely supportive in helping us move the project forward and highlighting the potential of offshore Jamaica. Good. Well, that's really um, positive, and thank you for giving us so much um, insight into that. So the next two questions um, work together, really. So mm -hmm. on a quick word about your finances. Um, you know, how are your finances at the moment? You've got cash in the balance sheet of just under $4 million, by the way, when I last saw. Your guidance for CapEx in the first half was 3.4, for the full year, 7.7. .7. How well are you financed? How, you know, are you confident that um, it should all go according to plan? With Yep, we have no uh, plans or need to raise equity whatsoever. We haven't raised equity in three years. I'm yep. extremely proud of yeah. that. Yeah. When we acquired this Egyptian business, we did it with the intention that we will not have to go back to raise equity to fund our business anymore. Yeah. And that's what Egypt has And Egypt was, funds the whole business. It was a whole yeah. company. It has funded the development of Jamaica. It's funded the development of Maria. <coughs> Excuse me. As well as funding, and this is an important piece, it's also funding uh, our ability to look at new opportunities. Which yeah. costs money. That's an to, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, but it funds 7.7 .7 million of, of capex. Yes. You've got actually quite a low GNA, haven't you? Very low. Uh, I, I am an accountant, so I run the business like an accountant. Uh, and I have a very strong CFO who is yeah. uh, very careful with our money as yeah. well. We, we've, because of the, the, the beginning of the company, you know, the company was started with so little capital, the company was started with 12 grand. We've had to make one euro and two dollars, or sorry, one euro, one dollar, and one pound to the same job as five euros, yes. five dollars, and five pounds. So we've always had to think differently about how we manage our capital. Yeah. We've a really good track record in managing capital. And if you look back over the last five years, we've bought assets and we've sold assets at profit. We've reinvested those money back into the business. We've never had to go back to shareholders in the last three years. Yeah. And during that period, we survived a pandemic when oil price went into the teens. Yeah. And we still executed our work programs yeah. and came out of that period profitable, yeah. which in my view is a real test of the quality of any business. Yeah. And you even had a couple of deals which didn't go the way you planned, but you've actually ended up with a, with a better portfolio as a result of it. Yeah, well, yeah. again, to go back to what I say, you, you played a hand a card you dealt with, and, and sometimes you have to change yeah. direction. And one yeah. of the things that my team are really good at is knowing when we need to change direction and yeah. making that call quick. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about m and because yes. I'm fascinated by it. I've, you know, having watched you closely and known you for at least the last couple of years or so, uh, I know how, how hard they work, and, um, and I know that in a minute you're going to give me a huge number, I imagine, of deals you've looked at and, and, and so on. So, you know, I'm fascinated by what you might be looking at. Obviously, you're not going to tell me what you're looking at, but, but the fact that you're looking at things and, and how they might change the direction of mm. uh, United. Because um, I know you work up a lot of um, projects. Yeah, well, firstly, there isn't a deal that gets announced that we don't know about or haven't seen. Yeah. We haven't missed one transaction in two years that we did not know about. I'm, again, I'm very proud of my team for their ability to make sure we don't miss anything. Yeah. Um, in the last 12 months, my head of M&A recently told me, in the last 12 months, we have signed 30 non-disclosure agreements. We've been in 18 processes and ultimately didn't come across any asset that met our investment criteria. We're not going to move away from You're our You're not setting the hurdle rate right too high? Or? No, we don't believe we are. We think, we, we think, we think we've think we been... We're, we're right to set it high because our shareholders yeah. deserve that yeah, from yeah. start. But also that approach has been vindicated in the success we've had with Egypt. We have to kiss a lot of frogs. And yeah. that's the analogy we use in the yeah, office yeah. all the time. But we're probably in a better position now than we've ever been for M&A. So, for example, our asset in Egypt, which we borrowed $8 million to, to purchase from BP, that asset's increased in, va in value substantially, and the debt has been reduced substantially, which means that there's additional borrowing ca capability and capacity on that yeah, asset. Yeah. In addition to that, our cash balance, which you've already noted, has, has been growing and increasing, and our, our balance sheet's getting stronger. Our most important asset is our people, and our team are getting stronger, more experienced as well, and we've added to our team in the last couple of years. So all the ingredients are there for us to actually be able to go, and as my CFO said on our presentation yesterday, Peter, we're building up a nice little war chest here. Yeah. And we may be able to go out and put that money to work. Maybe we can acquire something. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll need an equity component, but maybe we won't. And maybe yeah. we'll be able to do something by leveraging yeah. our business and, and extracting the cash I'm value. I'm your team, the fact that you've got some cash there doesn't mean so they're going to run out and spend it. 
No, I won't <laughs> let them do that. I won't let them do that. Uh, we are very strict with how we how we spend our money. Great. Um, time's running out. Uh, you wouldn't believe we how, how we've got through so much in in such good time. Um, the f the final question I always ask is. Uh, where a CEO sees the business in 12 to 18 months' time. And everyone always says, well, I've just told you that in the last 20 minutes. But actually, a bit of vision is what I'm after. Um, you know, you may say that you, you, know, you don't know because the, uh, the m and process, or uh, we're a seller. Everyone always says well, every asset in the portfolio is for sale at the right price. Well, how, do you, how do you see United Oil & Gas over, say, end of next year or so? By, by the end of next year, I would hope that our production is up. I would hope that we have a very clear way forward with Maria, where that might be a divestment or a farm down, or we are considering a development ourselves. So I would hope that we would have absolute clarity on that. Uh, same with Jamaica, I would hope we'll have clarity on our pathway forward to uh, develop uh, or to drill a, license, or drill a well in Jamaica. But I would also hope that we've been able to leverage off our existing business by going out to add to our portfolio. We have to scale up. We have to scale up and we have to grow, but we have to make sure we do it the right way, patiently, and uh, with with uh, clarity as to what we want to bring into our company. It's very important we get that right. Well, thank you very much indeed. for uh, You've done a great job in telling us where the company is now, where it's been and where you'd like to take it. Um, I won't go into the details about the naming of the company, but I do know that you do exceptional charitable work in the, in. in various places, and I know people are very proud of you for that. When I did a bit of work, everyone said the same thing, so it must be true. Thank you. And it's really been a joy to have you um, um, with us today on my CEO interview. It's so uh, thank you very much for joining us. It's been my pleasure. It's been my stuff. pleasure. So I've been Malcolm Grimwood on uh, Core London doing my CEO interview. Uh, my guest today has been Brian Larkin, the CEO of United Oil & Gas. Thank you, Brian, and thank you for joining us. See you again soon. Bye now. Thank you.